Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning once again. Gotta be honest, I was uh, a little under the weather uh, the last few days. Uh, my partner did have COVID. I did not. Uh, but just uh, haven't really been recovering lately. I'm sorry if I'm uh, extra slow today. Uh, again, welcome back. Happy to uh, to be here. Let me take a uh, a single sip of coffee. Just um, just to get a feel for if I could turn this into an uh, ASMR channel down the road. Uh, last week we did a uh, a deep dive into the Bitcoin chart. Uh, hopefully, I um, I have. Um, you took my warnings seriously. weren't really warnings; they were just disclaimers, I suppose. Uh, where we spoke about bull traps and bear traps being a real thing, where uh, once uh, sellers uh, need a lot of buyers, they do tend to do to do so in a moment in time where buyers are stepping in, which is usually around potential breakouts. Uh, as you can see, we are now, um, this is a week later, and we still really haven't broken out of this, uh, out of this structure. Uh, when we got this candle here on uh, Sunday last week, people on Twitter were going absolutely mental, uh, saying we finally got the breakout, this is where we're going to go up to 120, this is the last, uh, the, this is the last chance you're going to get to buy Bitcoin at cheap prices. Again, I really don't understand why you have to be in the business of predicting. I don't, I don't get it. You, you don't have to predict anything. You can just make it a habit to react instead of predict. And I know it's uh, easier said than done because people are either addicted to being in a position, uh, A or B, they're just scared shitless to miss out on a, on a move. The funny thing though, and it's not really funny, it's kind of, well, it's also not sad, it's just something you need to get the hang of, uh, I suppose is the best way to say it. When people are trading breakouts, their target, targets are usually pretty damn high. I mean, people are speaking of 120, 130, 150, 200 plus, um, so which is almost a um, a 2x from here so why not just wait for a confirmed breakout while you do give up on a slightly better entry you uh, are buying yourself more certainty which is worth a lot again i i told you guys this last week but if you if you predicted a breakout here if you predicted a breakout here or here or here uh, and here, once again, you would have been stopped out. Well, here, probably not yet. Your stop would be probably around here somewhere, around 62 or or 59, um, which is what I would uh, have done and, and did. Um, you would have been stopped out a lot of times instead of just waiting for the breakout to confirm. Now, once you get the hang of your own system, once you uh, start noticing certain patterns, um, which takes a lot of screen time, which really takes a lot of screen time. Uh, once you understand that market structure has indeed broken here, which makes it more interesting to position long at as, as opposed to these highs over here. Uh, so you, you, could, you could play the, the prediction of the breakout, but just realize that it does carry quite a lot more risk, not just slightly more risk. I would say quite a lot more risk, a significant amount of, uh, of risk. My idea, though, is that if this is, in fact, uh, starting to break out because we have the higher uh, highs and higher <coughs> lows forming, a higher high once again, uh, you're going to want to position long at the last higher low. Now, if this is the last low, um, a potential final low, a higher low, could be forming around here before we actually start breaking out. 
so my idea for this was to um, buy the last relevant levels before the higher low forms, which in my opinion uh, is and was 66.5, 64.4, and 63.4 now there's always going to be people who say you're not going to get those levels um i mean okay fine sure but the amount of times we've heard that i mean you don't even have to be a market veteran to know that people will always say you're not going to get certain levels uh but markets in general and especially crypto always squeezes higher and always squeezes uh, lower than you uh, anticipate or um or uh yeah just basically think will happen uh so that's my current plan for bitcoin so i've started adding to a long position here waiting to see if we get filled around here if we don't i'm just going to wait for this to actually break out then test the level uh from which we broke out of and then um along the retest uh, of that level again i will probably position long at the confirmed breakout already just in case we do not get a retest which isn't a given i've said this in the first episode i believe but everything in trading is probability um so once you uh position long at a confirmed breakout and what a confirmed breakout means well that entirely depends on your system what I will personally do is, let's say we uh, use 72, uh, approximately 72 as the level to break out of. Um, I want to see a uh, daily close 3% above that level. Um, again, I think I've, I've spent some time on this on the first episode, but it doesn't hurt to do so uh, again. Uh, so suppose 70. Uh, two is your level to watch and there could be multiple reasons for that um i prefer 72 because it has the most interactions you could take the extreme high which is um to add even more certainty to the to the trade uh, but in general i prefer especially with huge levels like these especially with all-time highs especially with uh, big targets I just use the level that is interacted with the most. Um, so we have 72.169. So you go 72.169 at 3%. It's going to be 74.334. So we add that level. 74.334. There we go. As you can see, that'll also be a close above this extreme high. I'm going to add the alert. Crossing up once per bar close on the daily. Create. So once this breaks out, once this confirms a breakout, it doesn't matter if we close above, if we close at 80 or 76 or whatever. Um, if, the, if the breakout is convincing... So I will second guess the breakout if it closes, say, at 74, 330 um, or 335, just like a dollar above it. Um, then I'll usually wait to position the day after. But if it's a convincing close above, and again, that's a discretionary choice. This is the, the beauty of, of trading. Um, such a big part of trading is, is discretionary. You can have a system, you can have a methodology, a method, sorry. You can have all these all these rules, but um, even if you if you even if you have a thousand page long trading system, there's still going to be a lot of discretionary choices involved with uh, with trading, and that's why it's so damn hard to copy anyone's system. Even if somebody writes again your their entire trading plan out for you, just trying to copy that will be really really difficult. And that is also the reason I think why there's still no really solid artificial intelligence bots who or that that uh, copy existing um, uh, living traders. Um, so yeah, the reason I take or use three percent is because of the uh, uh, rules by Edwards and McGee from their from their book Technical Analysis of Stock Trends. It is a 
It is a uh, an all-time classic. Do read it if you get a chance. But again, if you want to use 5% or 1% or 2%, you can. It just, you know, it just depends as well. Uh, it just depends on, on quite a few things. One of them being your target. target. If your target is going to be 5% above this level, using a 3% uh, confirmation is obviously going to be way too big. But if you trade stocks, and sometimes I do, and sometimes your target will be 6% or 7% um, uh, higher than the breakout point, then using 1% makes a lot of sense and 3% doesn't because you're going to give back like 50% of your potential uh, uh, profit. So that is the current outlook on, um, on Bitcoin. I'm not bullish. I'm not bearish. It looks good. Uh, market structure has broken, but we're still not out of the woods. Even though, again, it's probability, there is no good reason <clears throat> to say there is absolutely no way this will trade back to halfway point of the range there is no good reason to say this will not test these lows here um there is even not a good reason to say that there is, there would be absolutely no way we don't retest the bottom of the range now while i don't su suspect that we will again probability uh, there's not there's no there's no zero probability there's no 100% probability but there's uh, there's there's some there's always some um, and probability just really diminishes once we actually break out out of this entire seven month structure. Um, so yeah, that is uh, that is Bitcoin, ladies and gentlemen. All right, before we dive into the charts, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Exception. If you train on chain, you need to try Exception. I mean, we've all been there, trading on MetaMask, Phantom, Dex tools, or really any other Dex wallet, only to have swaps fail or get hit with ridiculous fees. And how great would it be to just set limit orders for any token so you can buy the dips or take profits without constantly having to check the market? Imagine going to bed knowing you won't wake up to another coin that dropped 99% because you could not set a stop loss or missing out on huge profits because you didn't have a take profit order set. And that's where Exception steps in. Now look, I've tried plenty of Telegram trading bots, and let me just tell you, Exception stands out. I wouldn't partner with them if I did not believe they were the best in the game. Plus, they share the revenue they earn through fees with holders of their token and traders using their bot. This bot streamlines on-chain trading and makes it so much more efficient, which is exactly what you need in fast moving markets like these. Check them out using the link in the description below. And we have uh, ENA, I am no longer in this position. This looked really good to me um, because we have the inverse head and shoulder forming, which is a very reliable which is a very reliable bottoming structure. Then we get this breakout out of it. Um, you could say, well, not really though, because you have this high here, which could potentially be part of the head and, head and shoulders formation. Again, this is where discretionary decisions come into play. Uh, I would have said, and I did say, look, if the uh, high here forms the neckline, we form the head. In case you don't know what a head and shoulders pattern is, this these are shoulders, uh, and this is going to be the head. And these come in all sh uh, shapes and, and, and sizes, but in all cases, you will have two shoulders forming and a and a head which is higher than the uh, than the two shoulders. Um, in any case, uh, we come back here, finalize the head form go back and then just the break here for me to me was a breakout out of the head and shoulders formation so i positioned long uh, added to the trade here but then we start trading back down uh, my initial stop was at this level here uh, but i closed the trade manually when we traded uh, around here somewhere close the trade manually this price action just uh, basically looked like absolute dog shit um once we get this kind of price action just the slow drift of death 
I've spoken about this uh, multiple times. I do not like that kind of prize action. Uh, quick, swift, aggressive moves are okay, but the, the, the slowness of this move, uh, I would not be surprised if we retest these levels here somewhere. That would not surprise me. Feel this, uh, <clears throat> feel this inefficiency. Now, inefficiencies and, and uh, gaps aren't guaranteed to be filled, but um, once price does trend or trade uh, back down below here, so below this structure here, there isn't a lot of reason for traders to step in anywhere in between this level and this level, so around this area here. Uh, the reason for that is because almost every trader uses previous support or previous resistance as a level to do business at. And once you get inefficiencies or gaps, there is no one has really done, there hasn't been a, uh, a significant amount of, 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 of business been done here. So, so traders or buyers in this case, once we trade down, will usually skip this area altogether and wait for the next uh, level that makes the most sense to step in at which would only be these um, highs over here somewhere. Um, so yeah, that's why uh, inefficiencies and, and gaps are important to, uh, to note. Uh, so currently not doing anything with this uh, market. So we're just going to remove this uh, right now. And we got coffee. I already uh, tried a short coffee a few weeks ago. Uh, was uh, stopped down. Uh, but I've... Uh, I've re uh, reshorted this uh, this market. Um, it is important to note that a rising wedge will almost never occur at a, um, a cycle top or bottom, so there will usually not be a trend reversal signal. But again, sometimes they do, so it's not it doesn't doesn't never happen, but it isn't necessarily a. Um, a trend reversal signal. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've sold this market, and I'm gonna um, um, see what happens if I get stopped out again. I will not be interested in shorting this market anymore. Uh, would have been the second time around. After two times, get um, um, struck out. I'm done. I'm not gonna try it a third time. Uh, which is usually when price does exactly what I hoped it would do. So uh, yeah, that's that's good times. Um, my take profit would be around these lows, would of course have to watch what happens around these lows here. Horizontal levels are far more important than, um, than uh, diagonal patterns are. Uh, so yeah, this one is uh, one to, uh, to watch. I'm also long Litecoin. Again, this is also a market where I, where I was already, um, uh, I've already been stopped out. Sorry, uh, I got long at the uh, confirmed breakout uh, here. This candle, so we got the uh, highs here. Retest, 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 uh, retest of all the uh, the highs. We got the ascending triangle going on, which is uh, in almost all cases bullish. Then we got the Confirmed breakout here, positioned long. Well, that fucking sucked, obviously. Was stopped out pretty pretty quickly. Uh, took a, uh, I, I manually stopped out the trade, so I did not take a full one hour loss, which is good. And then we get the second breakout. However, this breakout here didn't surpass this high here. So I didn't position long at this confirmed breakout. Then we get the day after, we get the shooting star, which is a bearish um, candlestick pattern. Uh, so it did not do anything. And then we get this one, which is again, a confirmed breakout, but still not surpassed the high of the uh, shooting star candlestick. So again, didn't do anything. And then we start trading up and I'm thinking, okay, I've missed this trade. Um, but I bought, this level here, which is the last uh, high pre-breakout candle. Uh, so I got filled here, 
And now we're just waiting to see what uh, what happens. My stop is around here somewhere. Uh, however, if we close probably below this low again, I'll, uh, I'll most likely close the trade manually. Uh, I feel like we are too far into the apex of the triangle. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Once you surpass the 70% of the apex of the triangle, it usually becomes a lot less reliable. So the further price trades into the triangle, the less reliable the chart pattern becomes. You really want to see it break out or down somewhere around here. Uh, we had the same thing with Doge not too long ago, where you had this huge triangle forming. Um, this one here, which uh, started in March. Uh, but you see we're so far into the triangle um, where it just becomes a lot less reliable. Obviously, in hindsight, this would been a, would have, would have been an amazing trade. Uh, I did, in fact, long the uh, breakout of this uh, high here, not just because it broke out of the triangle, but also because it uh, it uh, broke this high over here, which is an important horizontal level. Uh, but I got stopped out again. In hindsight, the retest of this triangle would have been in fact, the perfect level to do business at, but that is the beauty of hindsight. I still think Doge looks uh, really good. Uh, it's going to be testing this high and obviously this high if it keeps trending up. Uh, the most, and again, I don't trade fundamentals, but um, one of the most important things to keep in mind if you do trade fundamentals or at least uh, be aware of this is that uh, Trump is most likely going to win the elections on the 5th of November, which is uh, which is next week. Yeah, which is next. No, two weeks. Sorry. Um, Elon Musk and Trump are obviously besties. Uh, Trump is probably going to be a lot more bullish for crypto than Harris is uh, is going to be. Uh, so if you have Elon Musk, which uh, and and Doge is his baby, uh, this could this could do uh, incredibly well. This could do incredibly well. There is always black swans to be aware of, but people forget there is the opposite of a black swan as well. There's just positives for any market to just pop up things you don't necessarily um, think of, things you cannot predict. But this this could turn out to be one of the best trades of the of the century uh, later this year <clears throat> or maybe at the start of um, next year. So definitely keep an eye out on on Doge. Um, so yeah, there we have a uh, uh, Litecoin. Uh, Wu was a very good trade. Wu was a very good trade last week. Um, so what happened here? Uh, let me check. It's been a, uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Oh yeah. So we get this. Uh, we're moving up. We put in this high. These multiple highs really uh, trade away from this level. Uh, if you get a significant significant amount of price action into a level into a high, and then it trades back away from that level, this puts in a swing high. Then we get this structure here. Then we get this break. Um, you could say, well, you know, we did indeed break out of these highs, but you still have this major high here. And you could even say there's this potential high uh, here, which is absolutely true, which is obviously something I did keep in mind, which is why this was my initial target, depending on on, on what price would do uh, once it came into this level. Um, however, I wanted to buy these highs here. Um, so I uh, I did, but I trenched. I bought this I bought this position in, in two tranches, which is what I'll do. And I've also discussed this in earlier episodes. But uh, if we get a last high pre break close to a a swing high, an obvious swing high, or an obvious level, uh, I'll usually buy uh, both uh, both levels, uh, as long as I can keep my stop loss at the same level. 
if I have to use two different stops for the two different orders, uh, I, I won't. So my stop for both orders was below this thrust candle here. Uh, got filled on these two, so my average entry was around here. Um, price trades down, uh, nearly hits my stop, uh, but I wasn't stopped out, luckily. Uh, trade up, then we get the, the close, uh, important close above these uh, this high here. Now, um, even though this was an important high, these highs are then put in. So even though this closes here, you still have the, these highs to deal with. Once this uh, bar closed here, I added to the trade around this level, not around this level, at that level, um, because it's uh, the high here and still the swing high here, which I haven't forgotten about. Uh, got filled, added to, to the trade. I wanted to add again um, if we got a retest of this level here. However, we, uh, we didn't. I was hoping for this to happen. And then hit target, but we went straight into target. Uh, target was obviously this high here. So this was a uh, this was a really good trade, and the best thing, of course, is if your target hits and then just fucking trades down all the way back to your entry. This is this is the the best outcome. Uh, the only way this outcome sucks is if you have friends in trades in the same trade who didn't sell, didn't close, uh, and you know they're uh, watching their PNL uh, go back to zero or even negative. But if you're just all by yourself in this trade and it just trades all the way back down, that is just a great feeling. I gotta admit, I gotta admit that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm currently not interested in this market. Uh, I will be uh, interested in Woo, Woo if we uh, close above here. Because I do feel that once we break above that level, we'll, uh, we'll probably retest these highs here which is a pretty big move. Uh, it's a huge move, 60 over 60%. Uh, so I'll be looking at I'll be looking at that. Let me uh, set a set an alert on the four hour close. There we go. Then we get the next one. We got Solana. Solana is looking good as well. Solana is looking good. Uh, so I'm currently in this trade. I've already added to the trade. Um, so the reason I'm interested in this trade is because of uh, this. So you get the rectangle here. Rectangle is one of, no, no, one of the most uh, reliable chart patterns. It is the most reliable classical chart patterns. Uh, they have an extremely high... Um, uh, fucks the word again rate of succeeding yeah i think over 60 percent of rectangle breakouts reach the price objective which is uh, which is significant so this is the rectangle i'm working with the bottom is obviously a lot more obvious obviously a lot more obvious nice well done guy um then the then the top is um that is why you could poten potentially uh, not see this as a rectangle Fuck is in, but as a um, as a descending triangle, which would be uh, more bearish than the rectangle is. But all in all, this this is uh, this is a uh, a good structure to be working with. Now the reason I'm bullish Solana for it to at least retest to ten is because you get these highs uh, here, which is also around the halfway point of the rectangle which is uh not something i trade i'm not a range trader but range traders will uh look at the mid range and sometimes even uh quarter ranges so just to give you an idea of what that looks like um <clears throat> you get this here let me put in the 25 25 and then you get you get the 75 so this is what 
range traders will do. They'll have their range, then they'll have the uh, halfway point. This is the half point of the range. This is the quarter point. So it'll look like this, and that'll be their, their range. Uh, kind of, sort of, almost. Uh, so they'll be looking at the at the halfway point. Uh, once it breaks out of the halfway point, the mid range, uh, that'll be bullish to them, uh, and it coincides with the um, with the highs here. We get this breakout out of the highs to the left. This was an important breakout to me, um, so I positioned long at this last high pre breakout. This was the first level I bought, which was filled over here. Uh, and then we get new structure. Then we get this structure here. Consolidation. Boom. Breakout. This candle, important to me because it closes through the highs there. Uh, so I wanted to add to the trade at the last high pre-breakout again. Uh, I got filled here. We uh, trade up, starts looking really good, and then we get this fucking price action here, which kind of sucks. Uh, I uh, haven't moved my stop up. Uh, I haven't done anything yet. I'm still in this because on the daily, it still looks really good to me. Once we start getting a daily close uh, here, uh, I'm going to get the fuck out because then it's going to start looking really bad. Uh, I'm going to expect more volatility when we're near the elections. So it would be uh, it would be a shame to just get stopped out unnecessarily. On a daily, this looks really good. Um, obviously, the highs here, something to uh, be wary of. If we do get a, a nice thrust candle through this high here on the hourly, uh, and hopefully I'll still be in the trade, Hopefully, I'll have been um, I've been adding to the trade as well. If we get a nice trust candle through this level, uh, I'll be looking to add for the last time probably to the trade to trade it up to two ten. Um, there is no good reason that if we break two ten, we're not gonna see uh, all time highs. So, yeah, and the target I would be looking at for Solana would be the the uh, the rectangle target which would be basically the size of the rectangle, uh, top to bottom, bottom to top, and then simply uh, double it, 350, uh, 350, yeah, 350, 400 would probably be, uh, be it. Uh, so that is that. Then we have Tesla, fucking Tesla, what a piece of shit. Uh, I was in a Tesla uh, long because I bought the breakout here. Then I was stopped out. My stop was at <laughs> fucking 210, I believe it was. No, it wasn't 210. No, I was, uh, sorry, it was here. This was where my stop was, 2, 225. Uh, uh, got stopped out. Uh, and then we get a 20% update, which is ridiculous. Um, so I'm looking to reposition along on this thing again, Elon Musk again, kind of fundamental play as well. But aside from, fund from, from fundamentals, uh, technically this chart also looks really good because we still have the breakout out of the weekly and daily triangle. Uh, plus we get the, um, uh, Inverse head and shoulders forming again. This would be the neckline to break out of if we get a convincing daily close above 268, 269. Uh, I will, uh, I'll be looking to long this market uh, to around 400. Um, again, probably no reason not to keep a small position running up until the all time highs, which is 414. But this market looks um, looks really good to me as well. One thing to keep uh, in mind is that the indices are starting to look not weak per se, but momentum is really slowing down. Uh, I'm currently flat on every index. Uh, closed out Dow Jones. Stopped out at this here. Uh, 
this level here, I used a manual trailing stop. So got stopped out here. Uh, I wasn't long uh, the SMP. Uh, but if I was, I'd be flat as well. Things are just starting to look a little bit exhausted. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, Dex. All just looking uh, a little frothy. Uh, Russell has uh, traded up to the high of the range. Starting to trade back down. Uh, if we do break these lows here, uh, chances are uh, pretty high that we'll retest the, the bottom of the channel, uh, which would just be bearish in, uh, in, in general. I'm flat meta, I'm flat NVIDIA. Uh, got stopped out on all those trades with the um, manual trading stop. So uh, yeah, that is what the current market outlook is I was also in a long silver got stopped out of it here move my stop below this thrust candle I got long at the breakdown so I traded this up until here which is pretty good pretty good trade nonetheless um so yeah that is what I'm currently uh currently looking at I don't think there's much more to add than this um eth still just looking still just looking shitty this was uh, looking uh potentially hopeful but again just started trading back down again we are uh, still way below the yearly average we are still below the very important uh, support resistance level of 2800 as long as this keeps as long as this keeps trading below both the yearly average and doesn't break out of the 2800 support resistance level this just doesn't uh, look good uh, i've said so before but i'll say it again if we do break both out of the out of this channel and break or close uh, through these lows chances are pretty pretty big we're going to trade down uh way lower i don't trade or look at the eth btc chart or btc eth chart but i know that doesn't look really good it doesn't uh it doesn't look good so right now uh most important takeaway is i'm a very bullish solana it just looks good uh, i am not uh, interested anymore not right now in in Wu, unless we break 22 uh, 9 and close above convincingly convincingly litecoin waiting to see what happens doesn't look great per se uh but still in this uh, in this position and i'm uh long currently uh bitcoin looking to add around 64.4 and 63.4 uh if we close down below close down below that uh, i don't think it's uh it's a great look for the chart uh but if you want to um if you want to push this trade to the absolute limit when it comes to your stop you do not want to see that low broken it could be retested for a quick sweep a quick liquidity sweep because obviously there's going to be a ton of stops resting down here uh, again liquidity zones are um, comparable to bull and bear traps because there's just a lot of liquidity there liquidity there there's always going to be a lot of liquidity uh, at levels that are really obvious i mean a ton of people who are long are gonna have stops down here and a stop on a long position is a market sell uh, and if you have market sells here it is a really good position to buy at um so this is a liquidity zone so seeing this sweep would be would be would be okay uh, if we get a daily close below this level, it's uh, it's lights out, as they say in crypto. Uh, then I do not see a good reason for us not to retest these lows here. Uh, so yeah, guys, that is uh, that is it for now. I'm going to be uh, watching these markets next week. Next two weeks are going to be really uh, interesting. I uh, hope you guys have a good weekend. Please do subscribe. Please do share, comment, like, thumbs up, heart, you know, the whole shebang. It really does help me out quite a lot. 
Um, so thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next week. Wishing you a great Sunday and uh, have a uh, great trading week ahead. See you next time.